everybody, it's Madeline, the Fit Vegetarian. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. Today I am coming at you live because I wanted to go over part two in my series about vegetarian myths. There are a lot of fallacies out there about what the vegetarian lifestyle is all about and nutrition wise and just in general. So on Monday in part one, I went over like the general myths about the vegetarian lifestyle and today I'm going to go over a few general ones but most of them are going to be about nutrition. Um, so let's get to dispelling some of those myths, shall we? The first one is that when you um, are eating vegetarian, you simply do not get enough protein. Well, I'm here to tell you that is completely 100% false. I um, there are so many ways to get protein besides meat, besides chicken, fish, and other animal protein. Um, you can get it through dairy products, through eggs, nuts, seeds, um, tofu, tempeh, beans, legumes. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of the different ways that you can get protein in. But the one that is the most overlooked out of all of them is actually just vegetables. You guys, vegetables in and of themselves have protein. So did you know, and I'm actually going to take a sneak peek here at my little cheat sheet because I don't have these numbers memorized, but I think they're important that I give you the exact numbers to make a point here. Spinach is 49% protein. 49%, you guys, that's almost half protein. So that right there, I mean, when you compare that to beef, which is only about 25% protein, what does that tell you? I mean, that's huge. Kale, 45%. Mushrooms, ugh, don't like them, but they're uh, good for 38% protein. And I could go on and on. Broccoli, 45%. So there are a lot of veggies out there that just in and of themselves have loads of protein. So that myth, kick to the curb. The second myth, or technically myth number, uh, let's see, we did five on Monday, that was six, so technically number seven, um, that eating out is basically out because you're not going to be able to find anything to eat and you're just stuck having to eat at home all the time. Totally, totally untrue. I can tell you that many moons ago, 30 moons, uh, 30 years ago when I first became a vegetarian. Yes, it was difficult to eat out because all I had to eat all the time was salads. Like that's all I could order because that was all that was on the menu that I could eat. But now, oh my goodness, there are so many different choices on menus that you can, um, when you go out to eat. And honestly, there has never been a time that I've gone out to eat that I haven't been able to find something on the menu. And just as an example, yesterday we went out to, my niece um, became a deputy sheriff, so shout out to her, go Ashley, I'm so proud of her. Um, and we went out to celebrate and they picked a seafood restaurant. And do you think that I was in a panic like, oh no, what am I gonna eat? No, I knew I'd find something to eat. And lo and behold, I had this delicious um, organic vegetable bowl with a little bit of brown rice, and it was outstanding. So even if there's nothing on the menu, which honestly, I have yet to go to a restaurant where there isn't something vegetarian on the menu, but if you happen to go to that one restaurant where there isn't anything, then you can customize your order, you know? So get the, the, um, the entree without the steak. Restaurants are more than happy to do that for you because they're actually saving money by not giving you the steak, right? Or if you're like um, me, where I'm the only vegetarian in the family, I'll just say I'd like the steak on the side and then wrap it up to go. And then that's somebody's dinner for the next night at home. So you can do it that way as well. So that's another myth that really isn't true. You have a big variety of things that you can eat when you go out. The no another myth is that vegetarians tend to be malnourished. So not true. I mean, you do have to be careful with your iron intake, your vitamin B12, and also your, um, let's see, what was the other one? Your, um, oh, your omega-3s, your essential fatty acids, because 
those are the ones that we, if we're going to be deficient in something, those are the top three. Now your iron, you can get a lot of your iron um, with your green leafy vegetables like spinach, also through nuts and seeds, um, and through dark chocolate. I think I just made your day, didn't I? Dark chocolate, you guys, or dark cocoa powder. Now that is not, I'm not giving you permission, carte blanche, to go and eat all the dark chocolate under the sun, but an occasional piece of dark chocolate is not gonna kill you and is actually good for you. So you heard it here first. <laughs> um, then for vitamin, or for the omega-3s, um, you can get those by eating walnuts and by eating flax seeds. So uh, omega-3s typically is an essential fatty acid that is found in fish, and of course we don't eat fish as vegetarians, so consume some walnuts, they're also very good for your heart, and flax seeds, and you'll get your omega-3s that way. Now as far as vitamin B12, this one's a little bit harder, and you can, um, Get your vitamin B12 through fortified foods, uh, so like cereal that's fortified with B12, or almond milk that's fortified, coconut milk that's fortified with vitamin B12, so those would good, be some good options for you as well. Now another myth is that we cannot be athletes, or that we cannot compete with world-class athletes. Um, and I think you need to let, um, Let's see, Sir, uh, not Serena, but her sister Venus, Venus Williams, know that um, she can't be an athlete. She's a vegetarian, by the way. Uh, Carl Lewis, the Olympic runner, also vegetarian. And Bill Pearl, who um, was Mr. Universe, also vegetarian, you guys. I mean, we're talking a man who is just... Mr. Universe, for those of you who don't know, is a bodybuilding competition. And it's like the highest honor in bodybuilding. And he is a vegetarian, and he put on all that muscle while eating a vegetarian diet. So there you have it. So that dispels that myth. You certainly can be an athlete and compete at the highest of levels against other people who are not vegetarian, but you can be. So there goes that myth. Another one that I found kind of disturbing is regarding pregnancy and vegetarianism. They say, some people were like, oh no, you can't be, um, you can't um, be pregnant and have, um, or do a vegetarian nutrition plan. That is totally not true. Me, personally, um, I did, I've had, had three kids and with all three pregnancies, I was a vegetarian. They turned out perfectly fine. I you know, so here's the only thing, the only caveat, if you will, is that I would say don't become a vegetarian during your pregnancy. It's like, so I don't make that drastic change. But if you're already living the vegetarian lifestyle, there is totally nothing wrong. Your baby's not going to be deficient in anything. I took my folate um, or folic, folic acid, was it? Folate, I think. Um, it's been a while since I was pregnant. <laughs> But I took my supplement and no problems whatsoever. So if you're already leading a vegetarian lifestyle, you discover you're pregnant, you just continue on your merry way with your vegetarian lifestyle. And as a matter of fact, a funny incident that happened was 21 years ago when I was pregnant with my first child, I got the most intense craving for a Whopper. And for those of you who are not in California, the uh, Whopper is like a fast food hamburger from a fast food joint um, out here called Burger King. I don't know if Burger, I think Burger King is across the nation. So anyway, and so I'm like, okay, I haven't had meat in forever. I think at that point it had been about eight years or so, eight or nine years. And I'm all, I'm going to go get me a Whopper. So my husband and I went to our local Burger King. I can't even tell you the last time I had set foot in a Burger King. And I devoured that Whopper. And then I got incredibly sick to my stomach. My body was like, whoa, what are you doing to me? So it was not good, just not good. And it just goes to show how your body really gets used to good, healthy nutrition and vegetarian nutrition. And when you give it something besides that, it goes, wait a minute, what is this? I don't want this in me. And it does.
does anything it can to get rid of it and in a hurry. So anyway, that was my little side story there with my pregnancy and my, um, my hamburger or cheeseburger. <laughs> but the last myth that I wanted to go over today was that people seem to think it's too expensive. It's costly to become a vegetarian, when in reality, it's quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, I mean, have you, let's compare a pound of, what a pound of beef costs, or a pound of filet mignon, or a pound of fish costs, in comparison to a pound of vegetables. I mean, it's like one is way up here and the other is down here, right? And even when eating out, my husband, who's not a vegetarian, every time we go out to eat, his entree always costs a considerable amount more than mine because mine doesn't have any animal protein in it. So it's considerably less expensive to prepare it, to cook it, to make it. Um, the ingredients are considerably less expensive. So that's an added bonus because not only do I save money at home, but I save money when I go out to eat too. So that's another myth that just is not true. So those are some myths that I wanted to go over with you today. And, um, you know, I hope that uh, you see that you kind of need to educate yourself because there are a lot of things that get thrown around out there and a lot of them just simply aren't true. So just educate yourself and I hope that this has helped to give you a little bit of insight into some of those myths and to dispel them. For you and I wish you guys a very wonderful weekend and we hope to see you next time I'll be coming at you live on Monday I'm gonna try to keep this to every Monday and Friday I'll have a different topic for you so I hope you tune in then have a wonderful weekend everybody take care